I've actually had the pleasure of working with Nisha Kumar, our first speaker today. Uh, I also had the pleasure of actually wearing the prototype of what she's going to talk about today at DEF CON 25. So, and I had the only one, and that's why this came out, and I'm really pleased that she's here to talk about it today. So anyway, Nisha Kumar has, uh, is the badge designer for the uh, DC 503 badge that they used at DEF CON 26 this year. Uh, all of the stuff is available out on our GitHub. Uh, it's the PDX Badgers GitHub, uh, uh, PDX Badgers 2018 Banglet. She also maintains an open source project, uh, TURN, which is working with uh, Docker containers? Yeah. With Docker containers on finding out what you've actually got in it. And so anyway, without further ado, Nisha Kumar. Hello. Okay. Oh, is this thing on? Okay. Um, I do not know how to operate Google Slides, obviously. Uh, there's, a button. there's a triangle button? Oh, yeah, present. Okay. And right there. Sweet. Okay. Uh, hi. Uh, so this uh, talk is about the making of the banglet. I have one on my hand, which I will try to demo. And while I'm trying to demo, I'm going to talk about all the wonderful people that actually work with me on this. So there's Root Killer, John Hannes, Securely Fritz, and ODJ, uh, and Pierce. Uh, all of this uh, stuff that I'm talking about, the code, the docs, all the Gerber files, everything is on this GitHub. Uh, special thanks to the dog crate who got me involved in all of this in the first place, and the family who were very supportive uh, while I was doing this. Uh, quick question, how many uh, are under uh, 21? Nobody under 21, good. I don't have to have a filter then. <laughs> All right, so a little background about this. Um, so back for uh, DEF CON 25, which is 2017, uh, DC 503 made this lovely wagon badge. How many of you are familiar with the wagon badge? Yeah, it was awesome. It had uh, this uh, Rigado BMD 300 module that was Bluetooth enabled. This badge did not use any of the Bluetooth features, but it also came with um, this uh, 64 megahertz ARM Cortex with the, the giant amount of flash memory and RAM so you could run a little video game on it. Uh, and that was pretty cool. But um, there was no Bluetooth and that was something that the DC 503 folks wanted to include this time around uh, in 2018. Meanwhile, in my corner, uh, there was uh, Mickey asked me to make her a uh, bangle that had blinky lights on it. And this was a weekend project that I built really quickly. I had the, I knew what to use, but I had no idea whether I could do it or not. And so I just tried over the weekend to do it. So this is what uh, it looks like. Uh, she took it to uh, DEF CON and everybody wanted one, apparently. I do, not, I do not know because I didn't go to DEF CON. This is what I heard, uh, this is third person uh, the feedback that I got. But um, that was when later it turned out to be right because DC503 approached me and asked me if I wanted to make one that had uh, basically a bangle and all of the, uh, but the BMD300, so Bluetooth enabled bangle, which I will try to demo for you right now. So here's my phone, here's the bangle in passive mode, it just has blinky lights. Um, well, it just uh, has like static lights, it doesn't blink. And through the app on the phone, I can connect to it if I could find it because there are so many. <laughs> There's so many of them. Oh man, this sucks. <laughs> I should have connected to this a while ago. Search for it by name. Uh, uh, so I think this is Hoyt. Uh, well, anyway, here it is. It blinks. 
It's got a pattern there. There's proof. People have seen it. <laughs> and I will, um, this is unfortunate. Yeah. Oh, well. And it's also like rebooting a number of times, so it's obviously not foolproof. Uh, but there's lots of the the things that it has is that it's got in passive mode, it just uh, detects any nearby Bluetooth devices, and based on their MAC addresses, it'll glow a certain color, and that's what it is in right now. Um, uh, the, based on the number of Bluetooth devices it sees, you can unlock special pattern, like blinky light patterns with it. Uh, so. Uh, as far as the design is concerned, uh, this is inspired by Adafruit's LED bracelet. Uh, there's a link to it. They have all of their files um, for this available on their GitHub as well. They have a tutorial on how to make their, uh, uh, about their bracelet, and it uses uh, the uh, Adafruit trinket, which is like a tiny 18 80 tiny 85 based dev board. So their, their bracelet basically has a slot for the trinket to go into. Now, over here, the dev board that we base this upon was the Adafruit feather, which is much bigger than the trinket. So we had to place the board horizontally rather than vertically. And so there's a, little, there's a slot over there for the board to sit in. There's also a slot for the LED strip to go around. Um, and the LED strip actually is soldered on top of the board. So even, even though the board is placed on the slot, there's an LED strip going around it. So on the outside, you see like it's a one continuous strip. Uh, so the, there's also like a, a neo Dimium magnet thing, which snaps on really satis It's got a really satisfying snap, like a uh, normal bracelet. Um, John Hannes made this. Thank you, John. Uh, the board design is mostly borrowed from Adafruit's feather board, which is also available on GitHub if you want to check that out. This uh, board layout is also available on GitHub um, on the on the well, link that I showed earlier. I'll put that out if you want. Um, so the SOC uh, for the Adafruit board, we replaced that with the BMD 300. Uh, the, we shrunk the board down um, by basically removing a bunch of components from the Adafruit, the original feather board. Uh, we only routed out one data line we didn't have any reset switch or any on and off switch. Uh, the Adafruit Feather also has like a DFU um, on, uh, on switch, which is like a factory reset. We didn't have that. Um, and this board was designed by me, that's my GitHub, and Root Killer, who helped me. Uh, the board programming uses Adafruit's bootloader, which we burned, which we burned using uh, the Brigado board as a, uh, what, a JST programmer. Um, and so Nordic has a way of, this is all based on the NRF 52832 Nordic SOC, and they have a way of making a bootloader, but we just used Adafruit's because we were, we didn't really have much time. And um, we programmed with Arduino, I know ODJ said that uh, he's an electrical engineer. <laughs> I'm an electrical engineer too, so I cheated here. <laughs> uh, so all the programming was done by uh, Dean Pierce. Okay, and the board programming. This is actually one of the cool things about this board is that uh, Nordic has a UART BLE service, so it, you can, it, it converts the service allows you to talk to the to the device, so you can actually use one of those. You can e either use Adafruit's Blue Bluefruit LE app in UART mode, or you can use one of those serial Bluetooth terminal apps. They are available both in uh, Android and in iOS, and you can use any one of them to send data to the device. So we had made it such that if you 
uh, parse the data and you see any of these uh, keywords, it'll tell you what to do. So yeah, the, the, the bangle actually has a shell, which is, I, I think this is one of the coolest parts about this. Um, so yeah, it, it just scans, um, scans any, in passive mode, it just scans devices and reads the data from the Rx buffer and figures out, you know, based on the MAC address, what color it should blink the lights. And um, this, the fact that it has the, all of these different things, like the Nordic uh, Development Board is really powerful, actually. So you could, you could operate the device in either central mode where it just scans for nearby devices, or you can operate it in peripheral mode where you can talk to it from a central like your phone, or you can operate it in dual mode, which makes it behave like both a central and a peripheral, so you can make it do all kinds of like mesh networking stuff. There's actually like a GAT service for mesh networks that I haven't read about. So programming-wise, the possibilities are just uh, amazing for this one, and you know we can. There, all the code is out there. So if you want, you can hack it and see if you can make it work. Because within the time we had, I like couldn't figure it out myself. Okay, now for all of the gotchas. Um, so the design, because we were pro, we were designing the bangle and the board at the same time. I really didn't know the exact dimensions of the board. Uh, bef before the bangle was designed. So uh, we needed to secure the board <laughs> to the bangle with, uh, a, uh, with heat shrink. So we used clear heat shrink there. This made assembly horrible. Uh, we spent lots of time just trying to stretch the thing <laughs> over the board. Uh, and we had to also secure the battery that way. This didn't turn out we didn't plan it this way. This is just like how everything turned out, and this is basically hacking to make it sit there. Um, so uh, another thing is that we only had one size. We were hoping to have many sizes for like big wrists as well as small wrists. I have a tiny wrist, uh, and this is the only one which was tiny. And the reason I could make it work was because I dremeled out a slot for the board to sit in. So basically when the whole design was shrunk, the board slot was also shrunk and so the board couldn't fit in it. Um, there was a lot of dremeling happening. As you can see, we also had to dremel and carve out slots for the, the, program, the USB uh, slot as well as the battery slot. So um, along with the original design, there was a lot of hacking going on. But at least at now we got a good idea of what to consider when we're designing this. Um, board, uh, as you can see, this, this, is how, this is how we made the, this actually turned out very well. Like I thought that we did pre a good amount of forethought to think about where the pads ought to be on the board in order for the strip to be soldered onto it. Um, as far as the, that kind of alignment is concerned. There was a lot of arguing bo going back and forth with regards to this, but uh, I thought it turned out very well. Uh, one thing I didn't consider when I was designing the board was that the strip, uh, the strip thickness, uh, so it actually sits a little slanted on the board <laughs> because the board was not wide enough to accommodate it. Uh, these things. Uh, there were many uh, devices on the original feather board that were specific to Adafruit. So you could only source those parts through them. And uh, I mean, I understand why they do this. They, they need to make money. Um, but we had to find alternatives for that. The USB alternative was a reasonably easy find, but the JST one was really hard because we also had to consider what batteries we had on hand. So these are these LiPo batteries are used to, uh, they're used in drone design, like uh, drone hacking. So 
uh, that, that was the kind of connector that we had to work with. And so we had to find a compatible connector. And we also had to consider whether it was housed or not. And depending upon whether there's housing or not, we can make the connector fit. Uh, so there were very, I spent, a, I spent a lot of hours looking for the right connector for this. Uh, so these, these are actually uh, available on DigiKey. So uh, this, it worked out in the end. Oh, there's something over there that says, I am a noob. This is actually my first board design. Uh, I had never done this before. So in, in that itself was like, I, I, was, I was terrified. So uh, when I started off, I actually didn't do anything until you know, Root Killer told me, did you do anything? You got to work on this now. <laughs> so uh, there, was some, there was some hesitation from my part, but I'm, I'm so glad that it worked, really. <laughs> That's all like, I mean, that was a relief that it actually worked. Otherwise, it would have been like, you're never doing this again. Uh, yeah, so these are things that we or I did not consider when we were doing this. Uh, it was, uh, well, for one thing, the planning to put all this together was just enormous. I had no idea. There, I mean, you had to think about uh, assembly timelines, and and this is not just board assembly. This is like board uh, fabbing. This is board putting the parts on the board, soldering stuff onto the board, putting the board in the bangle. Uh, I felt like if we spent more time uh, thinking about how much time it would take to assemble this, it would have gone much faster. Uh, we, I don't think, I think we did consider whether the bangle is going to be easily assembled, but not to the extent where we're thinking we're trying to shave off seconds in the assembly. We were just like, oh, it, it takes us two, it takes us a minute to do this. It's not going to be that bad. Well, <laughs> you know, uh, two or three minutes multiplied by um, 116, 120. I don't remember, 160. <laughs> that's, a, that's a long time to assemble. Uh, there was also like 3D printing takes a long time. The bangle was 3D printed. Uh, they were 3D printed up to day of event by people in the community. Like people actually said, I have a 3D printer and I can print these things for you. And I don't think we would have gotten all of the uh, bangles printed if it weren't for people helping out like that. Uh, so. This, this took a lot of people hours. Um, OK. And people tell me that this was received well. But uh, so take this with a grain of salt. I, assault. I didn't go to DEF CON, so I don't really know. It's awesome. Everybody loved it. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's secondhand. I don't know. I will, I will be the judge of that. <laughs> um, there, I guess some of it happened, like some of the feedback I was getting was from the one Hackaday uh, article about all of the uh, DEF CON badges, and they barely had anything about this. So uh, it was probably because I wasn't there to explain, like, you know, this is all the cool stuff that it can do. Uh, all they saw was just a bangle with like blinky lights and some diffuse stuff, and everyone would have. Lots of people had them. Um, so I'm wondering, you know, um, just looking at all of the other badges that are out there, maybe this wasn't that flashy a badge. First of all, it wasn't even a badge. So it's kind of like one of those things DC 503 took a gambit on. Like they took a risk saying, well, it's not a badge, but, you know, it'll be cool. Uh, but it, it wasn't garish. And I wasn't really looking for anything garish, but maybe it ought to be garish. I'm not sure. Um, there, I mean, so I, I'm still looking for feedback on that. Um, 
maybe it maybe it ought to be subtle i don't know uh, defcon badges doesn't they don't seem to have um, <laughs> subtlety built into them <laughs> so i wasn't maybe this was just like a mismatch of vision um, but the fact that it actually worked was something just amazing to me uh, we there wasn't uh, much uh, as far as um, expertise was concerned, this looked like something that required expertise and we didn't have that much of expertise and we got ourselves up to speed on it. Uh, you know, big shout out to Control H that had all of the equipment. It wasn't state of the art equipment, but we were still able to use it to make something like this. So uh, it's it, I am just very, thrilled that this worked out the way that it did. And my hats off to everyone at DC 503 and Control H to be able to help me pull this off. So with that, I'm saying thank you. Uh, and I don't know, do we have time for Q&A? Five minutes. Five minutes for Q&A, okay. Does anyone have any questions? What? Uh, yes, sir. We thought that we would, but we actually didn't. Uh, we thought about it, and we were like, oh crap. <laughs> Maybe we, you know, but no, we didn't have any interference. So yeah, no, that's a good question. Did you want to ask something? Okay. <laughs> so I, I am in the process of thinking about it. One of the ideas I had was maybe make beads, use the mesh thing and make like individual beads that when, they, when you string them together will produce different effects. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of thinking in the way of like mesh networks but I do not have I do not have enough knowledge of how the platform works in order to pull that off. Um, I am also helping with the Diana Initiative, um, no. <laughs> um, and that's I and that's going to be like a very simple earrings kind of thing, but not with this. Um, that that'll be like more my style, which is like subtle, <laughs> not carriage. Thank you. Yes, sir. You mentioned there was a big lag because of the time it takes to review prints. Uh, did you find any method to perhaps use the one that you printed as the example and then have them mass produce one or two pieces? Well, so, I mean, there are several ways we could have gone about this. I suppose. The fastest way we could have done that is make a mold, uh, you know, and then outsource it to some kind of mold producing thing. But really what, what the 3D printer allowed us to do is to be more flexible. Uh, like I said, I was designing the board while the bangle was being designed. And we were actually able to make some changes with the bangle uh, based on how the board was changing. Um, but I think that that's a good point. Like, you know, if we had a prototype all set and we say, okay, this is, this is how it's going to be, then we could probably find a supplier who would produce a mold for us. Um, that would require long, like we, we did this in a, in three months. So, <laughs> um, that might involve, you know, more six months period. So uh, yeah, uh, there was also like some consideration of making fle using flex PCBs, but again, we do not have any expertise on making flex PCBs, so I don't know how that would that would have worked out. But yeah, um, mass production was not something that I was considering. Thank you for the question. Okay, are we good? Oh. Is there any consideration of using uh, clear PLA or whatever type of material you use? Or is this the white? Is it not required for material labor, rather? Um, 
I think we worked with whatever we had. <laughs> I have a black one, <laughs> which looks really sharp. Yeah, the the black one. Uh, I actually use super glue to stick the the strip on top of the black one. Um, we thought about clear PLAs the before, but I don't think we had any on hand. No, the, Oh, yay, you have one. Yes. <laughs> okay, I think I'll, thank you.